All right, I think we're ready to go. Oh my gosh, I need a sound man and a video man and I'm not used to doing all these things by myself. So I have got uh, two phones sitting in front of me recording. One is the live Facebook uh, feed and the other one is to record to post on to the email. Um, I have my family quarantined to the basement, but if they sneak out and you hear a dog bark, excuse me for that. So um, I love to see who's on. Thank you for that. I, I, I can't tell you how much I miss everybody. It's just kind of crazy how this is all working out. So let me say I am glad that you're joining me. I know this is very different from what we are used to. Um, everything is different right now. So I pray that you are finding a new normal and settling into uh, this physical distancing. Notice that I didn't say social distancing. Um, we must remain social through phone calls or social media or whatever means you need to do. Because um, I know this extrovert right here is dying inside and I miss my congregations. I miss my coworkers. I even miss my family. I'm trying to stay you know, distant from my parents because I don't want to get them sick or anything. So it's just... It's a different time, so we'll get through this all. We're strong and we're resilient, and we, of course, are not alone. God is with us today and always. So just a few announcements for the congregations. I emailed out this service yesterday, so you will be able to follow along. Um, if you want to print it out ahead of time and follow along, you don't have to. Um, I am trying to figure out a way to get the words and stuff on the screen, and that'll be something that John and I will be working on eventually. Um, so... We'll get better at this as we go. Let's just say that. Um, Lenten service will be on Wednesday night at 7. We are again at the crossroads this week. We are talking about the crossroads and the declaration. So we'll be spending some time hearing with uh, what Peter has to say. Um, I will. I had a couple of people post saying they'd love to have some devotions. I'm going to work on that. I don't know if it'll be every day, but I'll try to post some things out there when I can. Um, big thing, don't forget offering. You know, with us not being at the church, it's easy to forget to uh, give our offerings, but it's really important that church still has to have the money to keep it going and that kind of thing. So I urge you to either mail it in or um, go online and do the online giving. I am I'm I love online giving. It's super easy. I don't have to think about it. I know that I have given my offering and I, I don't have to question if I remember to do it or not. And there is information on that on the Facebook page and uh, John can send it out or I can send it to you if you need it to that. Just let us know. Bottom line, keep in touch. If you need to get a hold of me, I am here by phone, by email, whatever you want to do, text messages, um, whatever. Um, I'm Facebook friends with some of you, but if there's others that want to be friends, please send me a request and I'd love to be friends with you as well. I think let us begin our service. Um, we're going to start out with our confession and forgiveness. Um, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. Amen. As we approach the mystery of God, let us confess in confessions, trusting the love of God crucified in Christ, God who searches us and knows us. You have shown us what is good, but we are looked into other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others, and we have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we become before you? Forgive us our sins. Show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive this promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign in heaven. And the prayer of the day today is, Bend your ears to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts. And anoint us with your spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Um, our psalm today was perfectly fit for this this uh, this time in our lives right now. Um, it is Psalm 23. And because I know that we have so many people watching that maybe even aren't even from our congregations, I pulled out my handy dandy third grade Bible to do the uh, 23rd Psalm because it is the um, it's the version that most of us learned when we were kids and probably 
have this version memorized. So we are going to do this. But I will tell you that I don't have third grade eyes anymore. So we are going to put my readers on. So the shepherd psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for though art, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even in third grade, I like this verse because it's all underlined, as you can see. And our gospel today is a quite lengthy one. So the gospel is according to John 9. Glory to you, O Lord. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents that was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent him. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and he made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begged, asked, begging, asked him, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? And some claimed that he was and others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. And he replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. And he told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Well, where is this man, they asked. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said, he put mud on my eyes. And the man replied, and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. And then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And the man replied, he is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now that you can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind, but how can he see now? Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. He is of age. You will sp he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why the parents said, he's of age, ask him. A second time, they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. And he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. And then they asked him, well, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered, I told you already and you do not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? And then they hurled insults at him and said, you and you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as far as this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. And the man, man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he is, where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. And Jesus heard that they'd enthroned him out. And, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. 
Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment has come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what, are we blind too? And Jesus said, if you are blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O God. All right, so it's time for the children's message. And I have to tell you, I am missing you guys so much. Don't tell them. I love your parents and your grandparents, but don't tell them that you really are my favorites. I sure hope that you're finding fun things to do while you're at home with your families. And, and send me pictures. I know there was a conversation about a geodome being built yesterday by one family. So I'd love to see all the fun things that you're doing now when you're home together as families. Well, I want to show you a trick that I learned. We all know that our eyes can do amazing things. But I'm going to show you how your eyes can put a hole in your hand. Do you think I can do that? I'll even show you how you can do the trick yourself to not even see your hand at all. It sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? You can all try this at home. All you need is one of these tubes. And I know that you've got tubes like this around your house with paper towels and even toilet paper. So I'm gonna hold this towel over my one eye. Boy, this is gonna be hard to read and do this at the same time. So if I hold my hand in front of the tube and then put it right beside the tube, the side of my hand goes missing. It's like a giant chunk of my hand. There's a hole right here when I'm looking through the tube and that side of my hand is missing. It's crazy, you need to try it. Okay, keep both your eyes open, put the hand, your hand next to the tube and it looks like the tube is taking a big chunk out. Or you can do it together and put it like this and close just the eye that doesn't have the tube on and your hand is completely gone. It's crazy, you need to try it. So we are all pretty lucky because we have two eyes and it does, it does take both of our eyes to see a proper picture when we're looking at things. And our eyes see things and send those pictures to our brains and our brains figure out what we're seeing. Did you know that our eyes can see over 10 million different colors? and that they can focus on 50 objects in just one second. We are lucky that all, most of us have both of our eyes working. Now, some of us don't have wear, eyes that work perfectly. Some of us have to wear glasses or contacts. I even wear contacts. And today's Bible story is about a man who couldn't see at all. That man was blind from the beginning of his life when he was born. And Jesus decided to heal him and give him sight. And the people all around him, they didn't believe that Jesus gave him sight. And they got mad. They didn't even believe that he really was a blind man, the blind man. He thought it was somebody else coming in and saying he was. They also got mad at Jesus because they hadn't followed the rules of the people there. They were supposed to not do anything on the holy day of Sabbath. So they got mad about that. It, and it was silly because they were missing out on the most important thing. They weren't excited because the man all of a sudden could see because Jesus had done this miracle and now they could see that he could see. That what didn't even really matter. They were worrying about silly things, silly things that like what day he did the work on and, and how could mud make that happen and all kinds of things. They closed their eyes to the amazing miracle and only looked at the details instead of the new light that the man was seeing. God wants us to recognize that Jesus is the light of the world. We know about that. We've talked about that many times and that our eyes and our hearts should always look to him. So let's always keep our eyes open, open to see how we can be good to our neighbors and help others. We can keep our minds on God and what he wants us to do in our lives. Let's say a prayer, kids. Can you repeat it after me? Parents, you can help too. Dear God, thank you for your miraculous work. You do amazing things in the world and in our lives. Thank you for the true stories of the Bible. Help me to open my eyes so that I can love and serve all of those around me. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I do have to give proper consideration 
Uh, parts of that children's sermon were adapted from a children's message I found at ministrytochildren.com. All right, so thanks, kids. Let's get to our message for the day. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Perhaps you noticed that our gospel was quite long this morning. It was indeed an entire chapter of the book of John. All of chapter 9 is about one event, and that isn't common. John obviously seems and feels that this is important for us and wants us to understand what Jesus is teaching in this book. I grew up in a house of glasses. My dad had glasses. My mom had glasses. I wear glasses. My brother has glasses. And my youngest brother had glasses. We, he would walk into the eye optometrist and fill the lobby of the little office just as a family. I cannot imagine what my parents spent on our eyes especially since my brother seemed to break a pair about every other month. I still to this day struggle with my vision, and because of my diabetes, my, slight, my sight fluctuates sometimes on how well I'm taking care of myself. I get so frustrated at times because no matter what I do, this pair of readers or a new prescription of contacts, no matter what I try, I can't see much. Or I can't see clearly, but wait, that of course is an exaggeration. I can see, I just can't see as perfectly as I would like to. Well, our passage today is about a man who has never had sight. As Jesus and the disciples were walking, they came across this blind man, and we are told he was blind since birth. And the first thing that the, the disciples say is, who sinned? Who sinned, the blind man or his parents? In other words, there must be a reason something that he or his parents did or didn't do in order for this man to not have his sight. Novel idea, right? If you're good, then good things happen to you. And if you're bad, well, look out. Well, life might be a bit easier if this was how it worked. But, you know, if we were a good person and had a good life, we, life would be good to us. But we all know that's not how life works. And Jesus doesn't even think for a moment about their question. Instead, he sets them straight saying, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. Jesus also doesn't hesitate to prove his point and gets right back to work, showing this man the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which meant, means sent. And then he went and washed and came back and able to see. The light of the world has now given this man the opportunity to see that light, that light of God. He's a changed man. And the neighbors are wondering what in the world is going on. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar begin to ask him, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some were saying, it is he. And others were saying, no. But it's someone like him. And he kept saying, no, 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 I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? I can't, can you imagine? Those neighbors had watched this man blind for all of these years. And here he is coming to them with his sight. How can it be? There's no logical reason for the man to have his sight. And they want to know how this could have happened. Part of me can just imagine them bantering back and forth. That's him. No, that can't be him. Yes, I think it is. No, no, he's been blind since birth. I'm telling you, it's him. And clearly, they just go back and forth, and they never get to a point where they are ready to give in and believe the man's words alone. So they need to get some help. So they bring this man, and they haul him over to the Pharisees. And now it is, was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And the Pharisees also begin to ask him how he has received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and then I watched, and now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such sin signs? And they were divided. So they began, said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, He is a prophet. They still didn't believe. And most importantly, they get even more hung up on what day the miracle happened than what the miracle was itself. They make it all about the fact that Jesus has done this miracle. Basically, he has done anything on the Sabbath. 
He clearly can't be a prophet as he would never break their laws and their rules and work on the Sabbath. It's just unheard of. And again, they're not getting the real lesson here. They even go so far to call the blind man's parents into the equation, pull them over and start asking them, is this your son and who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? And his parents answered, we know that he is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how this is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he can speak for himself. And his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So the saga goes on. They still can't believe and let go. They can't rejoice for this man that has gained the sight that he has never had before. As you are probably beginning to understand, we are hearing probably the biggest lesson of this entire passage. As blind as that man was, since the day he was born, he has not been able to see. We can begin to see how much worse it is to choose to be blind and not see what is going on not see the miracle that has happened and appreciate the person that gave this man his sight. Although it isn't too surprising as if they believe this story, then they have to believe that their self-righteous rules and their power and their status can be called into question. They are too blinded by all that they have done and made and can't even think or give in to the prospect that any of this can be true. Back to the man who now has his sight. And this time, there's a little added pressure that goes along with the questioning. Give glory to God. We know that this, this man is a sinner. Again, again, with the belief that the man deserved to have no sight and that they, the powerful and lawmaking officials, clearly have no idea of what he's talking about. But that's not the reality. This man is armed with the truth. I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. I can't tell you who this man is and why this man went against your laws and gave me sight on the Sabbath. All I know is that he did. And the banters continue with him back and forth and back and forth. And finally, they just have had enough and they plain drive the man out of the, out of the area. And after all, they are the Pharisees and they know all. However, they drive him away. And guess what happens? Jesus seeks him out. Do you believe in the Son of Man, Jesus asked, and he answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Jesus tells him, he proclaims who he is and why he is there, and the man who had nothing, not only not sight, but nothing else, comes to realize that Jesus came and comes to give him so much more than just the ability to see. He has come to show this man all that God can offer. All that he has lived his entire life without is now available to him, and he does the appropriate thing. He worships God. And of course, the Pharisees still reject this idea and hold on to their self-made laws and status and nonchalantly ask, surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus replies, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Let's put it another way. You, the ones who believe they are self-sufficient, self-righteous, and are not the, and are you, let me fix this. You, the ones who believe they are self-sufficient and self-righteous, are not the blessed ones. The ones who are blessed are the ones who have no hope. The ones who must rely completely on God's grace, not only to see them, but to heal them. They are the blessed. And this is the same for you and me. God saw us and our incapability to see the light, to resist sins and trespasses and accept his mercy and grace. He saw us and sent Jesus to the cross in order to save us from that all. He took all that was broken in us. He took our inability to see and gave us sight and an eternal life by taking away our sins and paying for them all. We too can be left with a simple truth through the words of our gospel, the amazing truth that we are forgiven and have life everlasting because of the death and resurrection of Christ. 
May this story of miracle help you to increase your faith in God. May it remind you at times when you don't see clearly or find others who cannot see. All it takes is one visit with the light of the world. One visit can open our eyes just as it did for the blind man in our passage. Christ is the light of the world, and as a member of this world, he brought his light to us. Our eyes are open, and as long as there is a day, and as long as Christ is a light, there is hope for us all. Amen. Let us pray the prayers for the people. It will. Um, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, after each pr- petition, and you can respond with, hear our prayer. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, oh, how we need you now in these changing times. Help us to care for ourselves and for others in this time of continued distancing. Bring peace to all of us at this time. Anoint leaders who see goodness, righteousness, and a feeling of safety on behalf of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Accomplish healing through the work of all of our doctors and our PAs and our nurses and all of those who tend to our bodies and our health. We especially remember those who are currently dealing with illness those within our congregation like Don and Adele and Don and Evra and Riley and Veronica and Elena and anyone else I hope I don't remember, I can't remember, but please, um, we'll take a moment now and name those in our own hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now our hymn of the day, I'm going to try to pick a hymn that we all know each week. So the hymn of the day is Amazing Grace. And we're going to sing two of the verses. I know most of you know the first verse. The second um, verse will be the last verse. And once you get started, hopefully you will sing along. I'm trying to figure out how to get words up for you too. All right, amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures people of god heed this blessing may christ the wisdom and power of god and the source of our life together keep us united in mind and purpose and the blessing of almighty god the father and the son and the holy spirit be with you all amen take care keep in touch we'll be back on wednesday night at seven for Lenten services, please know that I have so enjoyed sharing time with you together. Um, I miss you all and uh, stay well, of course.